Hey, fellow streakers, we have got an exciting show for you today. We have Chris Dancy with us, and he is the most connected human in the world, and we're excited to have a conversation with him. I'll tell you, today is something we've looked forward to for quite a while. So, Jamie, let's get streaking. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited, Chris, to have you on. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you. I think this started back in October with our first communication. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Let me give just a little bit about Chris for our streakers that are out there. He is touted as the most connected man on earth, and the world is watching those connections carefully for 25 years. He served in leadership with technology and also uh, healthcare industry, specializing in the intersection of the two. Chris entered the public dialogue concerning digital health as the media started to focus on wearable technology, which, Chris, we know you wear a lot of different technology. We're excited about that. He has been on several news programs, podcasts, and everything else. We're excited that uh, he's taken the time to talk with us today. And as you know, streakers, we've got the three laws of streaking, which are one, make it laughably simple, two, no record, no streak, and three, create a community. Where we thought we'd focus with Chris today is in law number two on no record, no streak, because he has absolutely everything that you could have to track where he is in his life and getting the data from him. So we're going to do that as well as community, I think is an important one as well. So Chris, let's just get started right with the first question. How did you get into tracking and really getting all this data on yourself and what made you want to do that? Not going to lie, it was genetic. My mother, uh, I'm 53, my mother in the 70s and 80s, I grew up with her. She was a list maker. She was a calendar creator. So every year at the end of the year in December, we'd go to Hallmark. There were Hallmark stores back then. I think there still are. And she would get the free calendar and she would meticulously with me have me read last year's birthdays and other things and she'd put them in the next year she'd also go back if there were significant events and like re-put them in so they become anniversaries and this all just was normal to me i never really thought much about it fast forward now to the year 2001 i'm slightly over 30 my life is kind of a hot mess and <laughs> my my mom sends me these giant boxes of like I didn't know what was in it. it was for Christmas. I opened them up and she had literally cataloged the first, I think 15 or 16 years of my life every wow. single day. Wow. I had never even knew about. So my part of the story, we talk about later on, but it, the origin story, mom. <laughs> <laughs> it was mom. It was mom it was that mom. basically got you there. It was mom. Basically, yeah, keep it simple. It was mom. And I love that when I, I listened to a podcast, I think it was Whitney Johnson's podcast, and then reading in your book and you talking about the emotions that you felt as you opened that book and even to the point that i think you said at first it was a little overwhelming like you didn't even go through the whole book but I just still haven't. you still haven't I still and haven't. so and, and and you had mentioned just that it it helped you to recognize that even though sometimes you felt like your mom wasn't always present you recognized that she was always in a way present in your life she was she was following you everywhere you went yeah, so my family, like a lot of families, you know, we weren't we weren't rich, but we we weren't poor. But my mom worked like two or three jobs, mm -hmm. and I we were that house that kids weren't allowed to come to because there was no adults there. <laughs> you know that house on the block. You know, like you can't go to Chris and Chuck, my brother Chuck Chuck's house. But it, it overwhelmed me at times because I was like, well, what's why is my family so different? But when to this point, you know, again, when I received these archives from my mother at a very critical point in my life, I was like, wow, she was always paying attention. And I could always pay attention, you know, it was right. like, and that's kind of where this awakening in me came from of like, to, you know, to no record, right? Right. Um, I was just like, wait a minute, where am I? Uh, I could I do this for myself? How could I do it for myself? My whole computer brain started ticking at that point in 2000, uh, 2001, 2002, right. but 2003, I started getting serious. Yeah. So so as you were getting serious and talking about it, you started to incorporate technology into keeping a record of every part of your life, right? Yeah. Walk us a little bit through that. So I had always been, again, just because of my mom, uh, very 
record keeping centric. So in the nineties, all my computers and going even back after the eighties, I collected, you know, my records were in a database, but in the nineties, I started becoming really, really super careful about email. So I would just save a copy of all my emails, the really important ones. I stepped in folders, all the simple stuff people do normally, but I just have been doing it for a long time. By the early 2000s, when I got like, oh, wait a minute, I have a, a lot of information about my life. It just, it doesn't, wouldn't make sense to someone else. It became this quest, you know, in the early 2000s to, well, what is a life? Hmm. You know, what is a life and where would you find it? Right. Mm -hmm. Is it the stuff on the shelf? Is it the clothes you buy? Is it the, the bank transactions? There's so many records of who we are and what we value. And I think the most important thing I did, Jeff, in the beginning was just how would you sort it out? So I, I literally used Maslow's hierarchy of needs and started saying what parts of my life, whether it's spending or healthcare or etc., are are available to me on device says, you know, at the early 2000s, I have a smartphone, I have a digital phone, my computer, my, my bank transactions. And there's so many places you can find bills, like electricity usage is a big one for like how, how you're living. Um, and I just started stitching it together slowly but surely until 2008, when like this thing got really serious, I started creating an interface for my life that I could actually search and get like a snapshot of each day. And that's kind of where most people and my story picks up. But I wanted to kind of go back a little bit further for most people, because a lot of people are like, so you just thought about saving your whole life? I'm like, no, like you, my life's being saved anyway. It just wasn't mm -hmm. accessible. Right. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I love that thought too, that our lives are being recorded anyway. Mm -hmm. it, it's Regardless. not like they're not being recorded. Something you said that, uh, you, you said something, this may be a little bit of a tangent, but you said you can learn a lot from your energy bill. I think I heard that yes. right. Yes, it's true. <laughs> what can you it's learn true. from your energy bill? That's curious to me. I mean, so I'm someone who, again, because I've always kept track of my bills. In the early 2000s, I actually started keeping track of the wattage. So wattage is tied to square footage and a lot of other things. It's also sometimes tied to stuff beyond your control. If you have a large family and someone turns up there because you're not turning up the or didn't turn down there because turned right. the heat, that's usually gas. Um, but just your... I hate to say that, but your level of vivaciousness comes from your energy consumption. So oftentimes you'll find when your energy bills are higher, not because of something artificial, you're usually in a better mood. Uh, so we consume really? more. Yeah, we consume more of everything, whether it's volume on the music or, you know, taking an extra long, you know, hot shower with the radio on, or we just consume more. So electricity is always a big, you know, I always say to especially people that are like, hey, I think there's something going on with my spouse. I'm like, well, are you using more electricity? No, we're actually using a lot less. I'm like, oh, everyone's depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I great. just, sorry, I didn't mean to go down a tangent, but like there's no, there's no piece of your life that isn't telling you something about your life. But yet we sit, our, we, we walk around like, what's wrong with me? So well, I've had a question that I've been wanting to ask is that as you keep track of all of these things, how have you overcome the desire to not want to accept the reality of it does that make sense like you have data on everything in your life so you and everyone are, and everyone <laughs> so you including are you guys including I us know. <laughs> this is the first time in my life that i'm like i wonder how much data he has on me i mean is there very much every, out there i don't even know yeah i mean every every email and in our our meeting which we, we had last year and I think we had a reschedule at one point too. Yep. And, and then every time we have an interaction, I, I put a feeling on it. So I have a feeling score from one to 10 on how that interaction made me feel. So wow. I actually actively weed out people and institutions that don't make inspire me. Oh, that's great. And that's something that you started more recently, isn't it? Recently, yes. meaning like in the last 10 years where you're like, okay, I've got, is it is it a way of weeding out what's important to you? Kind of saying, look, this is how it made me feel. I'm not going to waste time on the stuff that's that's not making me feel better about life. Yeah, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna answer that one second. I'm gonna go back to your other question about avoiding. So yeah, if I have a bad night's sleep, I don't look. Oh, okay, so there are times you just don't look. I can't. Okay. I mean, I know myself well enough that that will just pervasively ruin the entire day. That's what I was asking is I'm like, how are you getting all this information and <laughs> dealing with the reality of it? Because there's times that I'm like, I don't want the reality. Let me live in my little fantasy world that this, you know, for food, this doesn't have calories today, that yeah. kind of stuff. But the actual Oh, I can't tell you how often I have to like hide the top of the screen that gives you the calorie total. Yeah. Like I don't not, not log. 
I just don't look at the the the, the countdown or count up. Okay. Uh, and you know, and the great thing about our phones is usually with all of these apps today, you know, there's a way you can really scroll through, like mm -hmm. you can see me scrolling. So I just put on the one I can take for that moment. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So that. So back to your question. So recent. So yeah. So if you think about my journey again, in the 2008, 2012, everything got written to a Google Calendar up mm -hmm. until that point. It's very simple, and it sounds not simple, but it's really simple. Like if you get an email, you can. There's a little software program that'll put a copy, not the whole email, but just like who it came from on your calendar. So you could start okay. to see your whole day. But by 2013, 2014, 2015, like our phones got to be a big deal. So like, where's the repository of your phone? So I started exploring some phone repositories for health, right? We all know that, like right. steps, sleep, et cetera. Yep. Behavior, like how much music you listen to, how many meetings you're going to, okay. how much money you're spending. Behavior is different than health. Right. An environment, these kind of three buckets. And mm -hmm. then those buckets would filter up. But now I'm going to answer your question. Sorry, I'm really terrible at like not hearing someone and going, okay, but to get there, I have to go back here. Um, by that, by, by 2016, 2017, I met someone. So it became really important to me to say, okay, this is all great. I, I love these buckets and all this categorization and I like my, but it ain't going to work if you have a family. I was single to this point. Like yeah. you cannot track stuff if everyone doesn't agree that it should be tracked because my first rule you know of living is we don't know how to measure what we care about so we care about what we measure what measure yes so it was like okay with my spouse what well, wasn't my spouse at the time but like what do you care about right and that became this whole kind of newer world of like well what are our values as a family and how do we measure the things that would roll up into those values that is so i can good. give you an example yeah. please do please yeah we'd love right. that yeah yeah yeah. so it's it's kind of fun so what we did was as a family back in 2016 we just stopped and thought about well is my screen showing yes, yes. it's showing beautifully right. so this is our family dashboard that lives in the kitchen it has our our actual values so they are things like health home and this is the order they go in health home work financial service uh etc and these values then if we have any type of let me go ahead and roll over into the value screen. If we have anything related to our family that we need to do, whether it's a dollar we need to spend or a, a, a task we need to complete, these values then are linked back to who we are as a family. So in this case, we had all of our entities, our pets, et cetera. And those entities are then linked to these values. And then these values are linked to everything from transactions to tasks, to projects, to communications or what we call interactions to our accounts to our assets so if we buy something right there's a actually you have the transaction of that asset but you also have let me give you a better layout of this but you also have what well, what was it used for and how was it used and when did you use it and what's really important and what's crazy is so much of this stuff is really easy to start to stitch together when you think about well, this is coming from the bank feed. And when we bought it, we bought it off a line and a web clipper can pick it up, you know? And I just think so much of what we're doing today, we're just throwing, we're just leaving mm -hmm. like behind us. And there isn't a way to stitch together. All this to say, if you don't have a value set, don't bother measuring. So true. In fact, that's one of the areas where we talk about a lot in streaking is who do you want to be? What are your values? What are the things that you're aiming to get to? And then what do you do consistently in order to get to be that person? And as I looked at, man, I had 13 questions as I was looking at exactly what oh, you're sorry. saying. Sorry. No, no, it's perfect. I love it. Because what I want, I, I wanted to ask, so when you got married and you, how did you introduce your spouse into tracking your life? Because that's oh, one of the things that honestly a streaker has a difficult time with is, okay, now I'm going to start tracking every single day that I wrote at least one sentence or that I, you know, made this dollar of a transaction. Mm -hmm. So how did, how did you bring your spouse into it and to say, you know what, this works or was there an uh, initial resistance or what was that like? It was hard. <laughs> um, well, first it's hard because I had the unique challenge of you can Google me. So when I start mm -hmm. dating people, they Google you and they wouldn't find you on Facebook. They'd find you in Newsweek. Right. They, wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't find a video of you eating ice cream. They'd find you on Showtime, right? Yes, so like, exactly. there's that whole crazy I had to deal with. But then once you get through that, it really comes down to most people track. Most people streak anyway. They just don't talk about it. Exactly. They, streak in a, they streak in a closet, right? Mm -hmm. And I think 
you really need to embrace your streak and embrace what what you what you value. Uh, if you're someone who values taking screenshots of someone you're not quite sure is going to stab you in the back, okay, you've got trust issues, right? We right. just need to. What does your streak mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do we accentuate? Is that someplace you want to be or someplace you want to be from? Because you can reverse or unstreak. Yeah, like, that's unstreaking true. is just getting rid of bad habits. Right. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so in bringing it in, in bringing your spouse in, then it was probably oh, yeah. long conversations. I mean, was it very long conversations, understanding what my spouse tricked at the, the, the time, but then more than anything, like focusing on how does my spouse successfully street. So in this case, I'm someone who's very into the creation of the record and the management of the record and all those other types of things, you know, very, you know, type A level stuff. My spouse is not. My spouse is someone who's very into thinking of, well, what did this mean to me? Mm -hmm. And how, so where I like tasks, my spouse likes intentions. So another example, when we when we have like a, a weekly review of like what we did as a family, we don't have like a task list we over. We have a sticky board where we sit down once a week on Sundays, we go over the things we did good, not so good, and we things we'd like to change last week. And then next week, we talk about the things we'd want to do, visualize, internalize, or actualize. And they're always on colored stickies that link to the actual values themselves. So again, let's talk about that. We could have a task list. We could have all the data in the world, but that doesn't work for my spouse. What works for them on understanding the structure and what our brain works and having feelings around those things. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. yeah. So I think a good streaker or just a good human being alive in this decade understands that technology has a way of wrapping and adapting to what we value and not the other way around. So many people become the apps on their phone instead of being the person they are and changing the apps. That is so good. I, as you said that, um, I had my daughter does ballet and she came home from one of her classes one time and she was so excited because her ballet teacher had they, they'd had some um, other dancers in class that were dealing with some anxiety issues and some different stressors that were happening. And the teacher had sat them down and said, we have all of these things in our life. We have anxiety. We have these stresses we have, but it doesn't mean that you have to be that. Even if you've got a diagnosis, even if there's a label around it, that doesn't mean that you have to be that thing because you're necessarily feeling that thing we have the ability to decide and that's what i feel like you're saying is the same thing with the apps these tools that are there that are meant to help us and i think you've done a fantastic job at being able to evaluate when a tool is helping and then how to say okay this tool isn't helping or how can i make this tool adapt to what i want it to do rather than exactly what you're saying that we adapt to the tool so and i love Make up Go ahead. Well, think, think about it. No, no, I, I hate to interrupt you, but like, this is so important that people understand this. I, mm -hmm. I, I wish I could just get this, you know, besides my mantra, we don't know how to value it. If someone gives you an interface, whether it's a book or an app or a computer, you have no choice but to become their version of you. Mm -hmm. It just, there's no way. It's just, it's impossible, right? You don't get to repaint art. You have to take it in the way artists create it. What's no different when you're using a logging app or sending an email? If the email prioritizes replying to all, you reply to all, ruin everyone else's day except for the person you meant to send it to. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so yeah. we need to freaking get the autonomy back mm -hmm. from the devices. Technology is not inherently evil. Our lack of thoughtfulness is. Mm. Just allowing the technology to take over and not because it's simple. Mm -hmm. okay, it is, I just yeah. did. I just did what it told me to. Well, mm -hmm. really? Like if your mother told you to? I mean, I don't do that whole thing. But if your mother told you to jump off our bridge, would you? Right, you're gonna do it. Yeah. You know, everyone you're... did it. Yeah. Yeah, you bring up a great point. And one of the things that that we found difficult. Just a little side note in building the streaking app, we've been trying to build in the methodology, which is part of it, but then the flexibility for people to adapt streaking to who they are. We always say to them, look, don't allow other organizations or apps to define your streak. You define you your define streak. It. You define what it is. When Jamie and I started exactly. this whole streaking journey, we started with um, learning about the Streak Runners Club uh, or the, the United States Running Streak Association. And they defined a streak as run at least one mile daily. 
And what I love about Jamie and what she did is she said, you know what? That's not really my streak. My streak is to do this. So she took the principle and the concept of what it was that they were do, what they were saying. But then she said, my streak is to run or walk at least a mile six days a week. That's my streak. So in techna, techna, tech, technically, Technology. technically, we don't belong to the United States Running Streak Association because we don't meet their definition. Now, this is not exactly. to diss on them, but no. it was cool to say, wow, we just took control of that. I, and, and what you're telling us is you can take control of your technology and your data, and it's incumbent that you do it. You, you should absolutely do that. It's the most important thing every family can do this decade. Mm -hmm. Do not hide the phones. Do not put away the computers. Do not do it. Right? It's like, it ain't going to get easier, right? Mm -mm. But talk about, like, why did you do that? I mean, we have a 10-year-old uh, that stays with us frequently, Fernando's sister-in-law. and I'm sorry, sister, my sister-in-law. And she, this is like a tech utopia, right? I bet. <laughs> once, yeah, no once she, yeah, like I mean, the whole house response to like speaking and mood and the whole bit, but <laughs> once she got used to it, she didn't want it, mm -hmm. you know? And I always tell people, be careful what you're trying to avoid. It will eat you. Yeah. I've seen that in moms. I'll just say it out there. People that ban sugar from their children. I'm like, I've watched children devour sugar at times where their parents aren't there because they know it's the only time they get it. And I love what you said about talk about it. That is my big thing with talking to parents and technology is I love what you said that it's not going away. We can't avoid it. It's just getting more a part of our lives. And so it's imperative that we talk about it, talk and not be so afraid to talk about it, not be so afraid that by bringing it up that it's going to make things worse for them or they're going to get into places that they shouldn't get to, but to be able to yeah. use that technology. And that's what I have so loved as I've been reading and studying is that you, two things I've loved. I love your ability to use technology, but it seems to me that every question you have in your life, you have developed some way to say, okay, how can I collect data on that and answer that question? So any, it seems any question you've had about yourself or about anything, your brain seems to think, okay, how could I collect data on that and then use that data to understand better? Use the not weaponize, right? Because I, no, I, think... I, I went through a period where I weaponized some data. I mean, just, <laughs> but I'm not going to lie to you, right? You, you, can, you can use this. I think for me, you know, again, cybernetics 101, right? There's, there's an organism like a human or something that's living, and there's a piece of technology. It can be glasses. It can be this. So this is a, a band I normally wear, but I'm not going to wear it during the interview. Um, this listens to me and gives me a score on the words I'm using. Was I happy? Was I sad? Was I harsh, et cetera? Um, how we how we respond in an interface with technology, right? The cybernetic principles of feedback loops is super important. And what people I think don't sometimes consider is there's no difference between the accommodations of carrying a phone and the accommodations of using eyeglasses or the accommodations of someone who might be um, uh, sight impaired and have mm -hmm. to use a cane, right? Accommodations are accommodations. Yet we don't tell our children that their devices are accommodations for who they are, right? Mm -hmm. And how they friend and how they are, you know, we don't talk about that. We don't say mm -hmm. a credit card is an accommodation, but it is. And I think the more we kind of get behind the veil of that's not me and say, well, that is me, but I think the world would be better. I mean, right now it's just- Just being more you know, honest. What I do online is different. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it is you. So as you've yeah. collected this data on yourself, how, so you've used that data. I guess I have two questions. One, what inspired you to be able to use that data to change? Because in your book, you talk a lot about how, as you learned more about yourself, you were actually able to make health changes, relationship changes, all kinds of changes based on things that you learned about yourself. And my second question is, how did you not get overwhelmed with all that information and feel like you had to change everything all at once? I did. So, yeah, but, but I, I literally did. That literally happened. Like 2013 almost crushed me. Um, I, I think just, you know, phase one, like, you know, to the second law of streaking, it's just collecting it is usually enough to kind of 
jog you a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So once you realize your phone has steps and all those and sleep and all that, you're like, okay, this jogs me a little bit. Step two, I think really comes down to like, well, what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. And that kind of your first question, and your second question are so linked because you can become overwhelmed. Right. The problem with collecting information isn't that it's once you like you get the hang of it, isn't that it's hard. The problem is, well, you can change anything. Mm. That's the problem. Potentiality crushes more people than than any amount of success. So, so do you mean recognizing that you're like, I really have the power to change this? Like it will ruin you. It will ruin you. <laughs> it's it. both freeing and terrifying at the same yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Wow. Because listen, I mean, but like everyone else with the pandemic, I would love to drop 10 pounds that I picked up during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I could do it tomorrow without thinking. I've got the best tools, the best systems. I know exactly how to do it. But I don't want to be crushed by the potentiality of fixing myself right now. I just mm-hmm. want to feel like everyone else. Mm-hmm. And this is the wrong time in January, almost February, 2022, to be walking around like life's so good. You need <laughs> to have some relationship to other people. So mm-hmm. be a little chunky, let maybe fall off the wagon and whatever you need to, and just kind of admit it. So because- do you feel like, do you feel like having all of this information and going through this process has helped you to accept things a little bit more in life, accept who you are, and then make better decisions about, okay, I'm going to change this, but not right now. Or do you know what? I'm just going to accept that. Jamie, I am so far away from where I was maybe seven years ago, where if something was wrong at anything, I had lots of metrics and graphs. I still have these dashboards. I just don't change them now because again, there's a certain amount of satisfaction and discomfort. And I never, I hate, I still don't like discomfort. I'm no fan, but I'm like, okay, this is awkward. Uh, I mean, I log, I, mean, I journal and log. So I built another system after my spouse and I got to uh, got together where I was able to like start to log my actual feelings. Is this a screen showing? Yes. yes. So in the mornings I come in here and they ask me to pick an emotion. And again, my spouse is not a, not a big wordy person. So I had to come in here and say, well, I had to like allow them to type in more. So for me, I created this giant, uh, excite, excite. Excited, um, emotion pickers. You can just type in words, then kind of like a rating scale, and then it can type. But just being able to come in and then have our feelings cataloged, and then because my spouse doesn't want to feel responsible for their feelings, I built in a tie to the moon cycle. Not hard, <laughs> but again, we now blame bad days on the moon cycle. Just between you and me, it's not yep. real, but <laughs> it works, right? Hey, if so, it works. <laughs> I think what is real is we all need just something in our back pocket to say, this isn't totally me. Exactly. Exactly. I've got the moon cycle. Combining kind of your streaks with other things, kind of correlations, not causation. Well, it is when you need it to be. Um, So, and that's okay. And again, I think if you get to know the people you love, your friends, your spouse, your kids through their streaks and they make you uncomfortable, that's okay. I mean, you're getting to know them. And I, Mm -hmm. What other time you're going to have, who's going to just open up rambling and say, I am so afraid to go on this podcast with people who professionally talk about collecting things because I, I'm a fraud or whatever the thing is your mind tells you. Well, like, yeah, I don't care. It's like, uh, at the end of the day, record collecting and documents do one thing for you, nothing else will. It proves you were here. Mm. Wow. Question for you. And this is uh, two things have come to mind. You live your life intentionally. I mean, mm-hmm. with everything you do on a daily, weekly basis, it is highly intentional. I, I mean, am I Would assessing that correctly? Would you agree with that? I mean, you know, it's, I just got chills when you said that. Um, like, even like the wall behind me is mm-hmm. intentional. Yeah. And before the pandemic, I didn't think anyone would ever see that. Right. right? Like, I didn't. This this has been here since I've got the house, like in 2018. Uh, to me, intentionality is really almost divinity in motion. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. If if God could speak through us, th- through it, through some in, in some so some way, none of us can. It will be it will be the things we do that we don't think anyone will notice, but they're there. And if there's one thing my mother always impressed upon me, and to this day I understand it is, leave things in such a way that people will know how you loved. Whether it's Mm -hmm. how you put your dishes in the sink, 
or you know, the scouts call it leaving the camp out in the Afanda. But to me, intentionality has to be so wicked that it's outside of time itself. Yeah. Right. And and it's just such a beautiful thing. So I love that you notice the intentionality because I am crazy about it. The intentionality of the wall behind you, every single one of the things that you have on there, you intentionally placed because it created either a motion or a memory or it was a record of some sort. I, I see off to, it's my left, but it might be your right, where you have, it looks like a family tree that-, uh, over, that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. over there. Yeah, over there, yeah. So the All whole wall is dedicated yeah. to time. Uh, time is something that's my greatest passion project in the whole world, living outside of time, looking at alternative time. So instead of chronological time, Kairos, uh, Kronos, looking at non-logical time, Kairos, the Bible talks about Kairos time. But right. this is a clock that goes around once per year. You can see right now it's past 12 o'clock. It's heading over to the green. So mm -hmm. on the solstices and the equinoxes, it hits. Over here, this clock goes around once per day. So right now it's coming up to solar noon or solar noon will be in the middle. And then it'll go beat back around. Across the top are time travel posters, places you can go in time. And then the charts, this chart and this chart over here, they're all actually charts. They tell you the information you would need to be in that sort of time. So for me, just constantly having a reminder when I walked in to do work that I don't have to be in time, I can be around it. Yeah. Mm. And we all sense it now because of the pandemic. Everybody's kind of had this skewed sense of time. Right. So, you know, again, streaking is just your time personified. Mm -hmm. Your time has no personification outside of streaking. Yeah. None. You don't yeah. exist. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think once we kind of come to terms, like what are, what time means to us, we can like start to do cool stuff with it. Last thing, let me just say this. No, quick. no, you're right I, there. My spouse is significantly younger than I am. I'm 53. My spouse is 30. Okay. okay. Because of the age difference, I had to be very deliberate and intentional about a lot of decisions we've made. One of those decisions and one of those functions is the fact that I probably may not live as long as my spouse. Mm -hmm. Right. And I expect my spouse to remarry and love again. Mm -hmm. So that means I have to love my spouse in such a way that the person who takes my place meets my standards. Mm. that's so an I've, interesting way to think through okay right yeah and you, it's, it's kind of like kids right you have to love your kids in such a way that when you're gone they basically would do your bidding mm -hmm. <laughs> i hate to put it like that dark, right and i think it's just or at least intention. represent you well <laughs> exactly I, that's all i'm saying sorry about that but i just yeah. think there's such an intentionality about time you don't get to live in yeah huh. so a, a couple of thoughts one one of my beliefs is that we are eternal beings living in a temporary existence. And so it's foreign to us. Mm -hmm. time and so is be, time is foreign to us. And that's so I, when you talk about living outside of time, it's one of the areas where I've thought quite a bit about, you know, there's a there's the time matrix that is wildly popular in a lot of different time planning areas. And I don't think it's a time matrix. It's an activity matrix. Mm -hmm. What are my activities that I'm doing that are going to be beneficial for my spouse, for my family, for my children, for, you know, my interaction with them, all of that for my fr family and yep. friends, yep. for this interaction. That's where I start to look at it and say, well, I want to be intentional about what it is that I do then the activities I spend time doing, which is where <laughs> all of streaking <laughs> comes, comes, comes in is, my streaks are what I choose to intentionally do consecutively because those are the things that are going to get me to where I want to be with Jamie, with our, and I love that you talk about children so much, seven children that we have. Um, and I love children. I just, I haven't been fortunate yet. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. And, yeah. and that's the type of intentionality I want to live. I, I, it's so inspiring. You uh, provided, you know, just such I was feeling the tingles as well inside of myself, just in looking at it and saying, let's be intentional and recognize it and do what we need to do in order to become who we want to be and become who or be set it up so that the people who we interact with can be who they mm -hmm. want to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so they can have a template for it. You know, one of the most interesting streaks I've never shared this anywhere but one of the most interesting things i tricked i literally found a book and that's what inspired me to, to check it was serendipity 
Mm. So I logged every time there was coincidence, serendipity, deja vu, literally things that were like, this is almost divine. Like, how did all of this just happen? Right. And what's really strange about logging things that are kind of outside of like, well, that doesn't make any sense to anyone else, but it affected you, was you start to go, wow, uh, I'm not in this alone. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole, there's a whole. A lot of people of read Bibles looking, read the Bible and all sorts of religious texts looking for proof or looking for faith when all they really need to do to go, okay, I, that was not me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so true. That I, was not me. I just can't tell you how much I love that you, that all of this is coming as you've kept a record of your life, that, that through keeping this record, you're able to, I mean, okay, so just for a second, a mind blow to me, you're keeping a record of serendipitous events that are happening in your life. That, that's, that's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm cheating. I found a book. I can, I can probably scoot around the desk and get it for you. I found a book years ago. I actually have a bunch of them. I send to people randomly now, especially when they're depressed, saying, just keep track of this. Because uh, again, I, I'd never thought of that. I right. never thought of like, well, that's kind of a coincidence. Because coincidence, so, so first step is deja vu, like, oh, I feel like this. Next right. one is kind of coincidence, but then serendipity, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's almost a, a non-linear timeline of significant kind of emotions we have. Mm -hmm. Serendipity is a big one. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, so it's like, ah, oh, okay, this is kind of important. So like even this morning when I went to your guys' website, and I was looking at the app and the book and all of that kind of stuff, I thought, okay, so they have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. right a lot yeah. and somebody needs to make sure that they know that it's noticed and that's i think i before we even went on camera i made sure yeah. you guys knew that and it's just like that's like intentionality plus like yep. keeping track plus like just being there so right. i don't know i sometimes i feel crazy <laughs> you're I not crazy so. at all no. not at all i in fact i want to go back to an experience that we had when the ipad was first introduced to the world i i talked to jamie and i said jamie i want to get every single one of our kids an ipad because this yep. is something that is going to be significant in their lives. She she pushed back on me. You did push back, didn't I you? Did. <laughs> but, but that's the story of our life. Jeff expensive. has a grand idea. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> let me think about that for a second. It has literally changed how our family has accepted technology and what we do with technology and how it is used as a a tool and not controlled by the tool, almost revisiting a little bit of the conversation we had before. But again, also reiterating the whole intentionality of it. I'm not going to allow technology to control me. I'm going to control the technology that I want to use in my life to make it going forward. So here's, and this leads to the question that I had for you. So a lot of times a record is looking back at what mm -hmm. has happened. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that I try to do is look forward to what do I want to keep a record of? What do I want to have in my life? How do you make that transition? What do you think about when you're like, okay, I've got the past, but now what do I do going forward? Yeah. So genius. I almost wish I was related to you. Um, so for <laughs> me, uh, when I built this system, uh, mm -hmm. obviously just hold the past, uh, this is actually broken down into reflection and inspiration. So that's kind of look back and be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the intention and protection is look forward and, and do something with it. Yeah. So for me, you know, you can use a lot of things. I chose tarot, not because it's particularly occultish, but I needed something visual. I'm autistic, ADHD, OCD all diagnosed. So I need something visual I can look at and kind of understand and just decipher, play with my mind, for lack of a better term. So for me, looking forward is about setting intentions, right? So again, you've got a, you've got a reflection back, inspiration, kind of be where you are, and you've got kind of an intention. The next thing I do in the middle of the day is I do a reflection kind of where I'm at in that day. So if we go back to yesterday, it'll make probably a little bit more sense. Um, uh, where, where we're at in the day, and then an affirmation, which is kind of like Right when you come in here and say an inspiration, but an affirmation is actually you're sure of it. I not only am I here, right? With an ins what am I inspired by? But I am something. Like yesterday, I'm a good friend because I understand others' needs and I'm flexible. I had a problem with a friend of mine who canceled on on something. At the end of the day, I do a gratitude, which is I'm here and I'm here with everything, and a reflection. So, uh, you know, when you ask about like, you know, how, how and when and where do you decide these things? For me, it was really about 
well, what is that process? I hate to sound so clinical, but what does that process look like in my mind? Mm-hmm. And in, in the future is an intention. Hmm. Right. And I needed a word for it, Jeff. I, I don't know yeah. how to say it. It's like, I need it. Well, what? And like, even my spouse does not do plan. Mm-hmm. Plan is not in there. You know, you know, people I'm talking about. It's like, not in what? the universe. Yeah. How, how did you survive like this many yeah. years? Like, <laughs> like the gas has been yelling at you for six hours that it's going to run out. And you're on the side, how did you get here, right? <laughs> so an intention to not run out of gas is a lot easier than a reminder to get gas. Like mm-hmm. I intend to get to school. I intend to get to school, so I need to get gas. Yeah. That right, is so. good. I want to write that down. An intention is a lot better than a reminder. That's yeah. really good. I well, an that. intention is a kind reminder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also a, reminder... a willingness. To me, it's the difference between something or someone else telling me to do something and me saying oh this is important and i want to do it today i'm i i intend to do this exactly and if you guys remember the the chart that my family uses weekly again i can give you a copy of this for your family if you want i would love love it it. absolutely in a heartbeat just the color coding is (laughs) inspiring well you'll you'll have to write your own value your own family values over because then the stickers go to those colors um but Again, move, looking forward, Jeff talked about this for a second, mm-hmm. now, versus thinking back. So we say feeling forward versus thinking back. Wow. So even when feeling we're feeling forward, forward. Thinking back. Oh, I like that a lot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because you can you can always think back, but you should never feel back. Okay. Don't, don't go <laughs> now, back to that. Yeah, think no, on it. Do not go back. <laughs> It'll kill you. <laughs> but even when you're thinking forward, you have to kind of stratify it. So yeah. for my spouse, visualizing it, it's like there's no commitment there. It's kind of like a light intention. Internalizes, okay, I've been thinking about this for a while. This is something that's really important. This is why remember you actually start your streak is in the internalization forward, forward mm-hmm. when you're planning forward. And actualization, again, is I'm doing it now, right? I hope that makes sense. I'm really yeah, weird no. about structure. Completely makes sense. I love yeah. it. So I love, so as a mom, what I'm thinking about is that you're talking about these different things that you've had diagnosis of, yet I am massively impressed and excited how you have figured out how your brain works, how you have embraced that, and then how you have gone through, even as you're talking about when you're like, I'm totally different than I was seven years ago. I very much value and appreciate the process that you've gone through of understanding how to work with all of this, understanding. So I think sometimes we're afraid to give ourselves to something because of the bad things that might happen. And so it's like, well, if I ignore it, then the bad thing won't happen. Where I feel like you embraced recognizing the things that you were doing and it sometimes went to that bad place of, of, your, of your like I weaponized it I and but then still had the the ability to be like okay this isn't the person I want to be nope. and, and instead of shunning all of the technology or all of the information you were able to take that and say okay I need to change how can I continue to use these tools and these things that I've learned from this place that I'm at that I don't want to be at anymore, how can I take that and change and be better and continue to move forward? And and I really valued that as I've been reading the different things that you've put out there and have watched and appreciate that you're willing to take that journey. I just keep, I mean, I hate to say this, but I'm so tired of waiting to grow up. I know. <laughs> I waited forever. You know how there's like, you can't wait to be 10 because it's yeah. two numbers, then it's 16, mm-hmm. then it's 18, then it's 21, then it's 25, then it's 30. And I kept thinking in every one of these, I'm, when does the, the adult show up? And <laughs> Now I'm I, to the point that I'm like, I'm old enough. Why isn't the adult here? Now right, I'm past right? the part I've buried my parents, right? I've buried my parents. I've done all that. So when? So I just had to come to terms, you know, with I'm never going to get old. I'm going to always have this brain yeah. and this brain and me have got to work something out. <laughs> We've got to find a work to, a way we to work together. We've got to find a way, right? And, you know, whether it be meditation, all the things I've done to really kind of, you know, stitch together a belief system, but more than anything to your point, Jamie's, I really always try to be profoundly honest about what I found in myself because it's always a bridge forward to someone I haven't met yet or a bridge back to someone who might've written me off. 
-hmm. I remember when you did that, it made me feel like crap, right. you know, and like, even writing a book, I mean, you guys have a book, you know, and it's like when you put a lot of your story in a book, it's freeing. Like, okay, try to cancel me. I talk about drugs and jail and right. I, I, it's in here. It's been mm -hmm. in here and it's been in a bookstore for years. Yep. So just try to do something with it. Right. You know, streaks should be keys to locks, not locks. Mm, that's good. We are going to use that right there. Keys to locks, <laughs> not Keys locks. To locks not here's locks, here's yeah. one of the streaks that I noticed that you do, and you you may or may not think about this. And it's something that we talk about as far as living intentionally, and that is you every day review that particular your and what do you call your board your visualization and also your actualization yeah every day i look at the journaling big app uh but the the board for the family is weekly so weekly we, okay see so you've got Sunday. a daily streak of mm -hmm. at least doing journaling, journaling. at least one time mm -hmm. daily and then a weekly streak one of, of many streaks yes yeah, and, and, you uh, are a man of streaks and you know what actually people ask me all the time well how many streaks do you have and I intentionally track right around 31 streaks that I have on either a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And it's to the point because of looking at successful individuals and people who have successfully actualized or operationalized their lives, I see there's cons there's not only consistency, and I kind of separate the two, consistency and consecutiveness. Yeah. Because yeah. you can be consistent in an action but not have it be consecutive. Yeah. Whereas a consecutive action lends itself to like what you're doing. Okay, how do I feel? How did I feel today? What was it that I did? And then going forward, that is, I think, and why I want to bring this out is for all of our fellow streakers out there, the streaks are the floorboards of life. They're the things that I'm not going to drop below. They're the things that I'm going to stand on in order to reach for my goals and aspirations. Yeah, I mean... It's it's so hard because to me streaking has always been a double edged sword. I, I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <clears throat> because streaking lends itself to time management, and time management kind of is the holy grail of basically living and dying. But <laughs> if you can somehow find a way to make your streaks almost have a level of equanimity to like you and your life, then it's not really a streak; it's life. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Bre breathing is the ultimate streaking. You know? <laughs> yes. It's just like, you know, and like, are you, know, are you measuring every one? No, but the watch is, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's super important that we're very flexible with the difference between, you know, consistent effort and streaking, yeah. right? Consistent yeah. effort is so different than consistent record keeping. It's an effort to write down and log how I'm feeling and when I'm actually not feeling good, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But I do it because it's important, you know, and just the other day, you know, God, bless his soul, my, my spouse said to me, can I have the journaling app? Now the journaling app's been around for three years, right? Now spouse wants a copy, right? So all of a sudden it was like, okay. All right. So there's something that happened that mm -hmm. made me using just an affirmation. Like I can't tell you like the, even the affirmations in the day and people are talking about gratitude journaling. I'm like, yeah, but then you're just basically like glorifying everything you've got. like you have to do an intent you know i mean it's uh, these things work together yeah right. uh, absolutely and the other thing is i'm gonna go back real quick to what jamie said about diagnoses you know being diagnosed in my early 20s as obsessive compulsive with obsessive compulsive behavior it's probably easy for you to go like oh my gosh look at what you do you're so obsessive compulsive you must be you know heck to live with well diagnoses i think in a lot of ways allow us to actually lean in and borrow what we need to and then lean out right there are certain mm -hmm. things i do that are i don't have compulsions so like i'm puro they call it so i don't have something that tells me you know do something i just have the recursive thinking which has nothing to do with cleaning or logging or anything else like that when i got to actually start to explore the adhd parts of my brain why well, just have parts of that you know, I don't have all that either. And when I got to like the autistic part, I've always been influenced by my environment, mm -hmm. right? So light, sound, it's very aggravating to me. The dog barks like I lose my mind and I have three dogs. So <laughs> kind of leaning into kind of the diagnoses you have, but also I'll end with this, leaning back into what Jamie said about my brain. It's like, I'm very visual. So like when I was building the system for my family, I had to say to myself, to, you know, to my spouse, well, what does our life look like? So I put our life onto a map, right? 
you know, entities is who we were, health is like what's important to us and our assets, what we collect and, you know, whether it be something we buy or money in the bank, those are all, you know what I mean? So like, I had to start creating a way that we could see our lives and then just click into these things. Well, who are the people that we dealt with and that we are dealing with? What are the organizations? So if I wanted to see like Netflix or Amazon, right? And then going from that organization into the things that we purchased from that organization. But more important, your values kind of underpin all this and your record keeping, right? And so this is all streaking, but mm -hmm. like just the act of visualizing our life has made people that I meet who like I show this map to, they go, oh my gosh, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, you've always had it, Dorothy, right? right? <laughs> Click your heels, you're there, <laughs> do your own map, get your own sticky board. And again, you can share both these things with your listeners or with your community, but take control and be right. as interested in you as Facebook is. Wow. As you as you've shown us uh, some of the different things, have you pro are, are those all programs of your own making, or have you taken and adapted things? How how could people do what you're doing, but without not your... without your level of being <laughs> able to program and everything else? Yeah, so there is a great movement in the world uh, in technology specifically called No Code. Have you heard of No Code? No. I haven't heard of No Code yet. No. Mm -mm. No code, low code is to the 2020s what mobile was to the 2010s. Okay. So everyone's maybe used a spreadsheet. Do we have any streakers that are kind of spreadsheet centric? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> low code, no code basically says there's, you can create tools without coding. So one of my favorite low code, no code tools, I don't have anything to do with them. They don't pay me is Airtable. Airtable is just a spreadsheet that's actually a relational database so you can say this meeting is linked to this person this company uh, actually what i spent this money on so it links back to things okay. so it's like streaking 3d streaking right? okay. okay um so i built them all but anyone can so okay. uh, uh, most of the things i've showed you today are over on Airtable universe which is where people just post stuff for free for other people to use but what i'd encourage your people to do is before you go and download a chris dancy template stop <laughs> Forget everything I just said. Please try to build it yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. again, I, so many people like, can I just get your system for managing my values? I'm like, no, because I'd have to give you my values. Right. <laughs> you got to decide your own values. I can't break my own like rule here. Right. 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 <laughs> what I you see. You guys know. Yeah. Oh, well, we know exactly. That, Absolutely. Because that, that's one of the things we talk about is you can't adopt our streaks. I mean, you exactly. got to come up with your own streaks. They're they're what you need in order to become who you want to who be. Who you want to be. Yeah. And we can't decide what your laughably simple is. Only you can yep. decide that. What one person's, oh. you know, walk around the block is another person's run six miles a day. Everyone has yeah. to decide what their own personal laughable yeah. simple is. And I guess that's what, as as I've as I've been able to read about you and get to know you a little bit better, the thing that I have I, I value the most is just that your your willingness to take this journey and to and to learn from it. I just love that. I know I keep saying that, but I just love what you've learned from this. And I guess that's my thing. If I was to ask one last question, is that of all the data that you've collected on yourself and other people, and what would you say is kind of the most important thing you've learned about yourself in doing that? I'm finite. I'm you finite. Know, I, I'm a, I'm finite. I spent okay. decades thinking I'm forever. And my actions here on earth are finite. And that puts that puts a period on them. That that makes them so much more profound than I ever considered. You know, I, I used to think, well, this stuff just comes and goes. And like, but no, it, it literally just goes. Hmm. And you know, when a streak ends, there's a certain amount of grief. Right. Yeah. Uh, when a streak yeah. starts, there's a certain amount of optimism, right? Yeah. So this constant cycle of birth and death, renewal and, and grace that you get when you kind of let go of something, it's just so important. So like the most important thing I've learned is how just how finite I am and how no matter how much I try, no matter how, what I do, no matter what I measure or what I collect or how it comes to be, it will end. Yeah. And that means the process of actually being involved and intentional in those creations were so much more important than the number of days I logged them. Hmm. I love that. Chris, 
This has been absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> All of our streakers out there are absolutely rejoicing in this. This is one of the podcasts that will be played again and again and again. And hopefully what we'll be able to do is from this and from what we've done is establish a, a kinship. I mean, I feel a kinship to you like none other guests that we've had. I hope that that continues forward. Uh, Jamie and I both love what you do and how you do it. Thank you so much for visiting us yes, today. Thank you yes, so much. Thank, thank you. you. And everyone else, uh, feel free to uh, replay this again and again and to share it with your friends. As you look at what it is that Chris has done, remember to be intentional about who you are and what it is you choose to do. Keep a record of it, and keeping a record allows you to see back and also to go forward. And as you look at your community of people, it gives you an opportunity to expand and broaden that community, but also to support them and celebrate with them as you go forward in life. So thank you for that, and thank you, everyone. If you want to ask any questions of Chris or of us, please shoot us an email, Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y, at streakingmastery.com, or... Jamie, J-A-M-I, at streakingmastery.com. And Chris, how do they get a hold of you? Oh my they gosh, Google. I'm just Chris at... Chris. I know, right? I'm just Chris at chrisanty.com. But literally, my phone number's on my website. So if you're one of these people who doesn't want to use technology, but most importantly, if you listen to the show and you feel inspired or you feel scared or you're alone, you're not. I literally pick up the phone for strangers all day long. My spouse will tell you, my phone rings off the hook. I think it's so important. You can call me. I pretend it's the 90s. You can literally call me. I'd love to hear from you. Oh. And I promise no matter what, it'll be great. Little postscript. Do you ever, you publish your life on the web. I mean, on the internet and everything. Does that ever, I mean, sometimes people say, well, I don't want Big Brother watching me. How do you respond to that? This is the difference between Big Brother and Big Mother. So, I, you know, Big Mother to me is kind of the intentional record curation of what you value and what's important, where Big Brother is kind of the intentional for like weaponization and kind of finger pointing. So I try not to screenshot stuff because usually I'm trying to do something terrible with it unless it's like an actual record or something I need to screenshot. So yeah, I mean, I understand that, I get it. But I'll just say this about kind of record keeping in general and being public. You know, if I were to see you guys as tax returns and your credit card receipts, and get to weigh you every day and see what you eat and you got to see all that about me we'd probably be closer than liking each other's posts mm -hmm. so where i am pro safety i'm post privacy i think it needs to go it didn't exist 100 years ago no one ever even used the word and it won't exist in the future this slim margin where we're acting it's insular beast that somehow can live above everyone else by hiding certain things has got to go wow Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I could talk to you for a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, and that may be one that we'll have to visit in the future. Chris, mm -hmm. thank you so much for, ha uh, for being on today. Everyone else, have a fantastic week. And as always, keep streaking. Keep streaking. Keep streaking.